And, and now we have a, a still life I did of um, a very classic, I, I wanted a dream against the ocean. And let me just get these in this order. They have to stay in order. And now I'll turn this one over and turn it back. And here we have, a, I, I fell in love with this jug here. And it's just a still life of all fall objects and a great use of color. And how come this one is not right now? Hmm, I must have taken two paintings out. And here we go. And this is a favorite of mine. I painted it like just a, a still life that's against the backdrop. But as you can see, when I do still lifes, I like to dream in them. I think this does have a dreamlike quality. And, and the sunflowers. And this was in the Boston Watercolor Society. The reason why I did this, and it kind of looks funny, I never saw such a big sunflower in my life as that one. It, it was a Rockport sunflower, and you can see I'm always putting things against the ocean. I love the ocean. And I've got to go careful now. Careful, and I better hurry up. I better hurry up. I'm taking too long. And here we have, I'll just turn it around. We can just do the best we can. I'll turn there. My spring flowers. I'm not much of a flower painter, but I like this, and I put it on the old cinder block. And this one here, better turn it around, has been in many, many shows, many shows. And I did this because my sister gave me this as a Christmas present, it's beautiful days. And, uh, and now we have the pheasant, and I'll turn this one around too. I think this one's quite expensive, the pheasant with the pumpkins. And, uh, and it's good I'm going through these because they're all upside down. How did I do that? And now, again, the flowers against the ocean. And another upside down one. They're all upside down. I hope that I hope that Cindy makes them all go the right way. And just um, just another still life. And just another still life. And just wait for a second for me to turn all these around because maybe everything's going in the wrong way. And I did that. And I don't really care much about this still life, but I shouldn't say that. And, uh, Oh, but here's one. Too bad I didn't finish it. It's with Sumi ink. That's on the opposite side. And now we have the owl. Ruth Hagstrom's mother gave Ruth. Ruth died at 100 years old. That was her mother's owl. And another still life. Don't care too much about. But maybe somebody will like it. And I love this still life um, with the pumpkins and my chess figures. And this is in quite a, this had made quite a few shows, this one here. And now, wouldn't you know it, now they're all going the other way. Well, I'll just turn them around because we don't know what way anything's going. And these are my horses against uh, a backdrop that I had. Uh, it was a mural. And I didn't finish painting this horse here um, because I didn't want to make it childlike. I wanted to let your, the mystery of you seeing it. And one of my most favorite paintings of all uh, is, this is The Road to the Flower Farm in Greenville, New York. And there we go, I'm gonna turn them around again. And this is, um, this one here is up at Thelma Langton's. And this is a demonstration at Greenville of Old Farm Loop. I have two of these, but one has the cows in it. A demonstration on a gray day. And you can see when you're studying the day, the reason why I have this in, if you see the color of the light of the sky here, the barns were painted a, a dark red, but you follow the light and the light is on is on the same color that's in the sky is falling on the barns and you have the air in it you see the same colors and and uh, and I did two of these this is Mount Mansfield I had liked this so much uh, I see it's got AWS on it 
I'd like this so much. It's Mount Mansfield up in Jeffersonville, Vermont. And this is, the, again, the barn at Greenville. It was a different light. You can see a different light on it. And there are horses here, but I never finished the horses. I just painted right over them. And Greenville, New York. I, I taught up there for many, many years. I think about 16 years. This is Greenville, New York also. And uh, another farm. And I have two of these very similar. It's a bright, bright color. But here again, you can see that what I'm after is the atmosphere. And the atmosphere is on these colors. And as you come closer, you lose the atmosphere. And uh, Greenville, New York and the Catskill Riverbank. Like this one so much, early, early morning. And Greenville, New York, and just another, I forget all the names of the barns. And this one is so old. It even got mildewed, but I took care of the mildew, the old uh, sugar maple in Jeffersonville. Here again is that Greenville barn. You can see it's quite different because I was at a different angle, still teaching, always teaching. This one here is a Pennsylvania uh, railroad station. It was, it was falling apart and they have restored the whole thing. It's a, now it's a tourist attraction with trains going back and forth and all this and stores in there. But I just fell in love with it. And again, I, what I paint is I try to paint the atmosphere. And I think if you see the color that's here, you can see that color, then you, uh, and working the color and the intensities, you were able to go way back, and then you come forward because the intensities grow again. Everything works with the sky. And uh, uh, Jeffersonville, Vermont. And Greenville, New York. Oh my, how I like this. This is Zion National Park. And uh, you can see, I wanted to show how great these cliffs are, these thousands, million years old, and how little, and then the trees, how little they are. See, this goes way out of the painting. And then the trees, these are big trees. But then, look at man. Oh, and this one is the one that's ripped, and it's right ripped. Oh, no, that's fixed, okay. It's right rip where the man is. And you see, that's an area in the painting that is very insignificant. It doesn't matter. See, that's the painting. This is like, and you can see that man is only a minor part of nature. And uh, Yosemite and the California coast. And wouldn't you like to swim in beaches like this? Look, and see, that's a beach. And the water comes in, and you've got these giant rocks, and the color of the sky is permeating the painting and is touching everything. And I better go faster or I'll never, never finish this. And I won't talk like this tomorrow. And early morning at Yosemite, you can see how quiet, how very quiet. And Sedona, again working. Look at how close this, these rocks are to us and how far away it goes, and yet look how close that is. Look at the intensity of that to this. That's how you create your space with intensities. And the main, co no, California again, California. And you can see a storm is brewing because the sky is very dark here. And when the sky gets dark at the horizon, it's always warm, warm color. And Mexico, it was so hot, we couldn't believe that we painted there, that's Brunel. And the mission, the mission at, uh, these are demonstrations, the mission at Carmel. Not lucky to go to these places and teach. And uh, Zion, Zion. And see again, I put the horse in just to show how great nature is. And Sedona. And again, the mission, but this mission this day was a foggy day, and I like it better this way. And you can see that that atmosphere, the atmosphere is all the moisture in the air, and colored by the light. 
throws that back, and look how close you come to send that back. And I took the color of the atmosphere, and I touched the top planes. And when you do that, you have to carry it through the painting. You can't just do it in one spot. And um, uh, Half Dome in Yosemite. Yosemite. And you can see how I turn the, I turn the, um, I turned the cliff with the color of the light right at the edge. And then I carried it through. Yosemite. And here's another Yosemite. Okay, there we go. And, and, and the California coast. These are great old trees. They're dead, but they were nice. And Zion. That's Zion. And the California coast again. And here I put the little man. Can you always see that I put people in areas that are so insignificant? Because, you know, if I took that little man and I moved that little man closer to the center, that little man, even though it's the same size, would have great importance. But I always keep my figures in, in an area that's not important because what's important is the bigness of the landscape. And here I took the color of the blue of the sky and I came down because a painting has to be tied together with color. And I came down and you can see I put it right against the edges of the rock there. So the painting is unified in color. And uh, mm -hmm. oh, the Mutuk. Oh, the wonderful day. This is behind the mission in uh, Carmel. And it's so mist. And uh, to the mm. Carmel coast. And I put these seagulls in to scale it. Mm. I love the color of that tree there. It really worked. And the water is in detail because the water's close. And the tree isn't in detail because it's far away. And this is Zion also. No, not Zion. Um, Sedona. And here, uh, the old ship. This is Eastport, Maine. And the old ships, the clipper ships that, and the, 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 the there's so many shipwrecks, and you only see them when the tide goes out. And so I had to wait. It's early morning. I was waiting for the tide to go out to see that. And, I, and uh, Skudik, Maine. And another one of Skudik, Maine. And now we'll just go to the next group. That's 50 paintings I showed you. Holy moly. <laughs>